Now that spring is here, lots of people might be thinking about fixing up their cars after the winter onslaught of rust. So this video is going to be about just preparing a paint surface on your car for repainting. I'll do another video at another time on bodywork. A really simple step that you have to do to do a good paint job on a car, which some people overlook, is wash the car really good by hand. Not a car wash, not a pressure washer. Get a pail of hot, soapy water. Add some good quality dishwashing soap to that water to make it soapy. And have a running garden, garden hose with you. And wash that car and wash every square inch of it as best as you can and rinse it off really well. And don't park under a tree at all in between the time you're going to be preparing the paint surface before you're ready to paint. The next thing is try to determine if the car looks like it's been ever waxed or recently waxed. So you look for little bits of wax edge, so that white stuff that forms from the dried paste that may be left. If it's never been waxed, great. If you find traces of wax, that's a painter's nightmare. The last thing you'd want to do is sand the car without having that wax removed because the sanding rubs into the crevices that the sandpaper makes. I don't have any here to show you, but you can buy solvents in cans like this called wax remover. You put them on a clean, uncolored rag and rub the vehicle <laughs> in the shade very hard and see if you can get all the wax off the vehicle. The next scariest problem for prepping a car for paint is armor all. People spray it on their dash. When it gets near this edge, some of it sometimes gets on the body or they're even doing their door panels so it gets on the body. Armor all is really hard to get off your paint and if you don't get it off it causes the worst fish eye problem you have ever seen and fish eyes is where the paint repels in little spots like divots. So if you notice the dash is really shiny or interior parts look like they've been polished up with armor all get a powerful solvent like lacquer thinner and wash all the areas around maybe where it could have sprayed off a tire and got on the fender or wash the areas around door crevices where some overspray might, might have went out and got on the body because it's too late when you find out when you start painting and your paint just looks like a moon crater surface. If you've done any body work in preparation for your paint job and bare steel is exposed it's best not just to throw an ordinary primer on bare steel. You should first put a primer like this on. It's a self etching primer it's your first type of primer. It sticks best to bare steel and helps prevent future corrosion. Your next type of primer could be a cheap one like this, which is just a lacquer based primer. You just thin it out with this stuff. This comes nice and thick and goopy. So you add an equal amount of the thinner to it to make it sprayable. Or you can use the stuff which is pretty similar that comes in an aerosol can. Just because primer dries really quick, at least it seems that way so that the surface seems dry, it's always best to let it wait one or two days before you sand it or park it in the sun. The disadvantage to lacquer brake base air dry primers is that they never stop shrinking. So if you've done body work and there's sanding scratches in your work or in the paint, well this can fill it in and when you sand it, it looks perfect and beautiful and perfectly smooth. But then after your paint is completely dry when your vehicle is done and months later, you'll notice standing beside it in the sun, you can still see the scratches. That's because the primer has shrunk a little bit more. So it's not recommended for using this for high quality special jobs, but for average work it's just fine. Right kitty? If you really want to do a good job, especially if you're doing a base coat clear coat job you get the two-part primer system this stuff you sometimes don't even have to add any reducer to it to thin it out it comes pre-mixed it's a high build type so it fills in scratches really well and gives you leftover material to sand off and you mix a hardener with it you try to estimate how much you're going to use before you mix it because once you've mixed the two together It'll harden up in your gun in a couple of hours and clog your paint gun. <laughs> that sucks. For ordinary sanding of paint, the best type of sandpaper is this gray stuff. It has sort of a rounder shaped grit so it leaves less scratchy marks in your paint. And for just an average type of acrylic enamel paint job or something like that, you would just use like a number 320 grit. You can get this yellow stuff in a 320 grit too. It's also made for body work. It feels a little rougher even though it's the same number. 
but it's just a little bit scratchier. But sometimes it lasts longer and it allows the dust to fall out better. If you're doing a base coat clear coat job like all modern cars have on it nowadays, you're going to want to use the same types of sandpaper I just showed you, but you're going to want to use sandpaper in the range of four to 500 grit. Base coat clear coat jobs are very sensitive to tiny scratches showing through afterwards when you look at it at the right angle. Before you do any sanding along the bottom edge of your vehicle, it's always a good idea for at least a foot up to put some lacquer thinner on a clean rag, or well, one that isn't colored either, and rub it good and hard all the way along so your paint job isn't contaminated with road tar and other things that you may have ran over, even dried worm guts. When sanding your car, of course in these little spaces you've got to do it all by hand. It's critical to make sure the sandpaper gets into the closest little edge. Any edge left unsanded, the paint won't stick properly in the future and it starts to peel and look very unprofessional. You never with a power sander sand too much on corners because you don't want to break through the paint and see the primer or metal underneath. You have to be very careful. A cheap $25 electric orbital sander works fantastic. You can get the same type of thing in an air sander if you want, but they do require a lot of air. You can get sanders that have a round disc on them too that spin around slowly or vibrate and spin around at the same time. They're very commonly used in body shops. It's also perfectly fine just to sand your car by hand. Can't go wrong that way. Just got to make sure it's evenly scratched up all over with no shiny spots. Next thing to remember whenever you're doing car body work is having clean hands. Very first thing you do when you start working on a car sanding or any kind of body work is wash your hands. Who knows what you've touched that could be a contaminant that would cause fish eyes in your body or some places where paint might not want to stick. When you are in the painting process, always a bit of paint goes around the corners, even though that's not the part you're aiming to get at, so you don't want it peeling off there either in the future, so you do a little bit of sanding around the corners of all edges. Once you're done sanding your whole vehicle and it's just caked in dust, well you get your air blower out and you just blow all the loose dust off first. Then with one hand holding the air blower, the other hand is quickly using a clean rag, rubbing at the same time that air is blowing underneath of it to work out all the sandpaper particles and dust particles that are in the little crevices of the scratches of the paint that you made with your sandpaper. Assuming that you've got all the masking tape on your car and the shiny paper and stuff that doesn't have lint on it and it's all ready to paint now, your final step is rubbing it in a mild solvent usually called xylene or paint prep or something like that. If you don't have access to completely uncontaminated clean uncolored rags you can buy things like this called Kim towels or whatever they are. The color doesn't leach out they don't create hardly any dust and they're great for prepping your body by rubbing it with that xylene stuff just before you paint it. You don't rub it with that stuff or that I mean that solvent until the last minute. Now the last step prepare your body for painting. That means if you don't have a good quality painter suit you can just go to a hardware store or a building supply store and buy a cheap disposable painter suit from anywhere from seven to twenty dollars. They've got a zipper on them and they're usually white and they've even got a little hoodie on them to help keep your hair and dust and clothing fibers from going on your car. And the last type of clothes you want to wear is a sweater. They leave too many fuzzies that me be blowing around. Then take a hose or pails of water and wet the whole floor area down around where you're working. If you're not quite sure and you're still worried about getting fish eyes in your paint, one way to help possibly alle alleviate some of them is a product called Smoothie. It's like a glycerin looking product. It's, it's just a thick clear liquid. You might put like a couple drops in your cup before you go painting. It also helps the paint flow a little bit for a better shine. Now the last step before you hit that vehicle with your paint is a tack cloth. They're a cloth in a little sealed plastic package which is semi-sticky and you lightly open up that cloth and you lightly rub it all over your body surface. Yep, you just sort of just lightly pressing it and that's picking up the last bits of dust and whatever came on your vehicle just before you're going to paint it. It's even a good idea to go over the edges where the tape is a little bit in case there's dust there. Do that once or twice and you're ready. 
next video on this topic will be about the painting process.